Today we're going to take a look at my custom mixer module. G'day, I'm Chris and welcome to the bench. I have one of my Euro 8 cases here because today we're going to take a look at this custom mixer module. How it functions, how it was designed and how I built it. So let's take a look. This is a four input mixer with simple panning arrangement, two auxiliary effects sends, stereo returns in a compact 8HP package. It features a defeat switch for the effects return. It has muting function as well as a hard panning function, volume for each channel, plus the effects sends have their own send levels. It also has this funky stereo visualizer for the main outputs of the mixer. It has dual passive outputs on 1 8 inch stereo jacks, which goes into my mixer. And if I want to also at the same time also record something direct, I can do that without interrupting my mixer feed. So here's a block diagram. On the left we have our four inputs and their associated gain pots. Each goes to a simple pan and mute switch, which can pan the signal center, hard left or right, or switch it completely off. The hard pan option alternates between each channel, left and right, then left and right again. Each channel has a buffered auxiliary send with level control. Channels 1 and 2 go to send A, and channels 2 and 3 go to send B. The two effects can come back into the mixer by the two stereo return channels, and the effects returns can be defeated by flipping the mute effects switch. Now things are about to get a little bit nerdy. So if you're not into electronic design, feel free to jump straight to the demo part of the video here. I started by referencing a stereo mixer design that I made five years ago. I took the input stages and the output stages of that design. Pretty standard DC decoupling, typical attenuation. Just needed to work out how the panning circuit would work. For muting it just pulls the signal to ground. Each send is a unity gain inverting amplifier. Going to a pair of inverting summing amplifiers for the auxiliary sends. I've designed it so if you plug nothing into send B's output, channels 3 and 4 will just go to send A instead. The four inputs and the two returns then go into a pretty standard summing amplifier, and then onto the two stereo output jacks. The effects defeat switch is pretty much as simple as it gets. The Eurorec power socket and power filtering is pretty standard. I didn't design the visualizer circuit until after the build. I'll show you that a bit later. So here we are in Fusion 360. I like to work out my designs in CAD as much as possible before committing to building. It's so helpful in working out where everything needs to be and if something's not going to work. As you can see, it was a tight squeeze. Not to everyone's taste. I do all my prototypes on strip boards. This design required a few different layers of strip board. The two stereo jacks, for instance, needed to be lowered down to be flush with the front panel. And the standard strip board that I have isn't quite wide enough for the whole module, so I often meld two boards together. Once I have all the components sorted, I then line up where all the holes should go and punch some virtual holes through that front panel. I started by cutting the Vera board to the correct width and drawing outlines of the components with Sharpie markers. Pots require some widening of the holes to accept the little tabs on each side. I solder all the panel components first, then pin headers, connect all the grounds, then start routing everything to those pin headers. Then it's checking continuity, checking for dead shorts. Rinse and repeat for the lower board, which was considerably more complicated. Took a long time, but no pain, no gain, right? 
Then it was time for bench testing. My pocket oscilloscope was very helpful here. Some issues were found and those issues were fixed. Then it was time to drill all those holes carefully. So it was finally time for the really fun part. The stereo visualizer basically consists of three LEDs and a piece of silicon tubing. After a bit of experimenting and tweaking on the breadboard, here is where I ended up. The circuit is a pair of variable gain amplifiers going into two simple half-wave rectifiers with a bit of capacitor smoothing. These signals drive the two LEDs. A bit of voltage also leaks to the central orange LED so it doesn't get completely swamped out by the blue. So in CAD, I played about with a bunch of different ideas but eventually landed on the orange and black colour scheme centred around the send and return sections. For the more complex sections, I decided to give some printed stickers a go. I spray painted the bottom section black and used my milling machine to engrave the little arrow next to the switch. Okay, we're back at the bench. It's time to break this module down. Start by taking off the nuts. printed nut spinner, orange washers underneath here. Special nut spinner, because these nuts are a little bit different. To remove the silicon tube so that we can get the top off. The silicon tube actually goes over the LED. That's it, just a piece of silicon tube. Now, front cover can come off. And there go the little washers. So there are little washers. They go there. Now, the board. just a sandwich so we just remove it like this bring on the time-lapse there you go we have two circuit boards let's have a bit of a close look at this first you can see the painted section here these are actually adhesive backed vinyl stickers. The writing is just too fine. I'm not an artist. This stuff sticks pretty well. So I just went with that. The rest of it's just bare aluminium anodized. So here we have the main board. It's, it's upside down, Miss Jane. That fits that. So pretty much everything you saw in the explanation before just the visualizer section which has all the resistors and leds quite a lot of header pins here more header pins on this side the little daughter board with stereo jacks on it classic strip board and here's the infamous daughter board which is what took most of the time and it isn't the prettiest it got a little out of control we have our Eurorack power connector power coming in here smoothing capacitors your three quad op amps wish I could find smaller capacitors than this but in order to fit underneath this guy I had to bend them at odd angles as you can see I use a lot of permanent marker to show me what's going on and where underneath the visualizer sensitivity left channel and right channel and there's a central led that goes directly into the center of the tube that gives it that slight orange glow this just controls how bright that basically is yet another little daughter board tacked on the bottom by the way i love these little resistors 
It's still through hole, but they're smaller than a normal carbon resistor. You can squeeze more stuff in. They're awesome. Just got an oscillator. So you can hear that this input has some reverb going on it from the 2 HP verb which is on auxiliary send 1. Channels 1 and 2 are sent to auxiliary send 1. Channels 3 and 4 are sent to auxiliary send 2. On AUX 2 is a gritty delay effect. There's a send level control for each input. So I turn it down. No send. And no reverb. Start sending it back. Nice wet signal there. On the other input, we have a delay. And this one I've plugged in a little differently. I've only plugged in one channel. And the reason for that, just turn this volume down a bit. The reason for that is that you can get a stereo effect just by clicking this over to left channel only with a switch. And now we're getting a classic stereo sort of ping pong, not really ping pong, but stereo delay anyway. Get the balance right. One second. Now, when you're trying to listen to things, you just want to listen to the sound without the effects. There's an effects defeat switch here, which you can flick across. No more effects. You can just concentrate on the source sounds. Mono, left channel, off. Mono, left channel, off. On this channel here, it's the other way around. Mono, Right channel, off. Bring the effects back in again. actually distorting. Let's turn these inputs down a bit. Now we're a bit more balanced. And let's have a look at that light show from the visualizer.
I've been using this mixer for a while now in my Eurorack case and it seems to be working out rather well. I'm happy with the configuration, I'm happy with the capabilities and it seems to be just all around the right size and spacing for getting the job done in a Eurorack case that's this size, the 63 units. The unit seems quite robust. I've taken it apart now a couple of times to put it back together and it still functions as it's supposed to. For a prototype, that's a pretty good result. I have changed a few things. I had some small knobs, but they weren't really small enough and the fingers just got jammed in between. I actually ended up taking them off and just twiddling the knobs coming through the front panel. But they're a little bit short. So lately I've been working on 3D printed knobs that are very narrow and they seem to be working out really well here. They clear the cables and they look quite nice. So I'm pretty pleased. Well, I think this video has probably gone on long enough now. So I'm Makeshifter, I'll see you next time. Oh, I don't know how to do surface mount components.